All right, uh, another circuit to take a look at. Um, you saw my repair videos for my um, 5 amp 8, 5 volt 8 amp power supply that I converted to a 0 to 20 volt 4 amp power supply. And at the time making that video, I had used an LM350, which is a uh, adjustable uh, positive regulator, good for 3 amps. And I had tested it up to 4 amps and everything was just fine. Um, I, my, my impression was that those particular circuits had uh, shutdown capability if they got uh, over temperature. And so they kind of saved themselves if you tried to run them too hard. Well, <laughs> I found out that's not true. If you run them at 4 amps, eventually they die. And they die um, shorted in a funny way. They, they will conduct 1.5 amps and just kind of stay there at 1.5 amps. And <laughs> anyway, they die, they die a nasty death. So that was too bad. I really did want it to go to four amps. So um, plan B, um, I've seen circuits like this a lot. You'll see these in data sheets. This was in the uh, Texas Instrument data sheet and it uses a pass transistor. So instead of, uh, this one's good for five amps, instead of five amps going through your, your LM317, you have a pass transistor and then the current runs through that uh, through that transistor out here. Now the, the problem with using a um, uh, NPN transistor is that it's kind of the wrong way round and you really want a PNP uh, transistor and so you have to put in a secondary transistor here to do um, part of the work and then you, you sort of have this situation here where you have a, a PNP plus an NPN turns into a, a, it's kind of a PNP Darlington type of weird thing. Anyway, um, I forget, I forget that it's a Japanese name, I think, uh, the guy who invented this configuration. But anyway, um, so, so I thought about building one of these. Um, this particular transistor needs to handle quite a bit of current though. If you have a, um, a transistor here that maybe at five amps only has an HFE of say 10, you need half an amp uh, running uh, through the base. And which means this transistor has to handle um, half an amp. And if you have a couple volt uh, emitter to collector change or uh, difference, then that could be quite a few watts. So you need about a three watt um, a three watt transistor here. The one they've chosen here, I think is a, uh, is a three watt transistor. So anyway, so you're looking at kind of two high wattage, um, uh, transistor to make this whole thing work. Now there is another, uh, circuit that you don't see a lot of, but, uh, it's this one down here. And this one uses a, a PNP and, uh, it, it has the right configuration so that you don't need an extra transistor. It's just going to work by itself. So, um, I've seen these quite a bit. Um, they're not as popular because it's harder to find a high powered uh, PNP. It's easier to, to find an, an NPN. Um, but I was looking around my junk bin and I, I had a really, really nice uh, PNP to use. And I'll talk about that later. So let's first talk about the circuit and, and how it works. So if you just left off the, uh, if you just left off the transistor, uh, you just have a, a 317 and you could adjust its voltage to anything you wanted, and then it would be able to supply current. Um, the data sheet says that LM317s are good for one amp, so you can draw one amp, and you wouldn't have this, this resistor there. You would just connect that for in, in and out. Um, but the way this circuit works is that you put a, uh, a resistor here, and the reason you do that is uh, because of this situation, all right? So at high current levels, say five amps. Okay. I'm going to design this thing for, for uh, five, five amps. Um, you have about a base, um, base emitter, uh, junction of about a volt, uh, about one volt, one, 1 1.0. Okay. So you have about a, a, a volt drop here to turn that transistor on. Okay which means that you have to have one volt across this resistor. Um, so if you have one volt and five amps, you have one twentieth of the current, right? One twentieth of an amp uh, of current. 
So that's the amount of current that will be flowing through the 317 where you get to a point where this transistor starts to come on. If you start drawing more current through the 317, you'll get a bigger voltage drop. Let's say you'll get a 1.2 volt drop. If you had a 1.2 volt drop here, then you're turning this transistor on. And then instead of the current going this way, it now has a separate path. So um, always part of the current will be going through here, but some of the current will be going over here. And so you design it for, well, how much current do you want? So if we have um, uh, 1 20th of an amp as a, uh, as a baseline, so anything greater than 1 20th of an amp, this will start to turn on. And so um, most of the current will go the other way around. Now you do have to allow for current through the, um, uh, through the through the base, all right? So you do have to have some current turning this on and uh, It needs to be supplied by the 317 also so not just the normal amount But you're gonna have an additional amount to turn this transistor on and your HFE is 10 You're gonna need half an amp uh, half an amp plus the 1 20th of an amp uh, going through here, so it would still work okay, um, but uh, the transistor that I had in my junk bin was a Darlington PNP. It was a uh, 2N6287. It's uh, rated at 20 amps DC and 160 watts, so <laughs> it's pretty healthy, uh, healthy transistor. And the cool part is that the um, the HFE is, is is greater than 100 because it's a it's a Darlington. So you only have one one hundredth of the uh, base current as you have here, right? So instead of uh, having uh, five amps, you only have, uh, what, five milliamps? Is that right? Point, or 50 milli, yeah, you have 50 milliamps. So very little current here. So the 370 can be able to ha handle that just fine. So anyway, uh, long story, this is what I ended up with putting into my machine now. Uh, so this is a, uh, this is a TO3, and so it bolted right into the uh, existing PC board. And the cool part was, the way that that PC board was laid out, um, it originally had the uh, case, which was the collector of the NPN, tied to the output. But remember, it was regulating a negative voltage, not a positive voltage. It was kind of weird. But anyway, um, in this particular case, the uh, uh, the case of the of the TO3 for this is also the collector. So I didn't have to change the PC board at all. It just bolted right into the circuit and worked just great. And the uh, base and the emitter were on the same pins as that original NPN that was in there. So it just worked out really, really nice. It popped in there and it went really good. Now there is gonna be a little bit of current through this five ohm resistor. And uh, so I, I made sure it was at least a one watt resistor, um, probably overkill, but um, made sure that that was uh, that was enough because you do have uh well you do have at least one one twentieth of, of an amp going through the uh, five ohm resistor okay so that's what i ended up with um it's an interesting circuit um it allows you to use um 317s at a much higher level uh, you can also uh, go a step further and uh, with either one of these you can put in a a, a secondary um, uh, secondary transistor. And whenever you parallel transistors to get even more current out, it's always good to put a, um, uh, put a resistor, uh, so that the, so that one doesn't current hog. And in that particular, um, power supply, that eight amp version, it had a 0.125. It had two NPNs that it shared, and it used uh, uh, 0.125 ohm 10 watt resistors um, in the uh, in the two collector legs. I think they were actually yeah they were actually over here. They I think they put them on this side. Doesn't really matter which side to put them on. You just want to limit the current. Um, but yeah, um, there you go. So just to make sure we understand this circuit too, in case you decide to build this one instead. 
Um, it's going to be the same thing as here, okay? So this section is going to work all the same. Um, and so this transistor will turn on as long as the uh, voltage drop across this resistor is bigger than the VBE drop here. So this transistor will turn on. But instead of that transistor going all the way around, it actually, its current is going to go through the base and then out and turn this transistor on, right? So uh, it's just a little bit different. There's a 500 ohm here, 500 ohm resistor here just for biasing to make sure this transistor turns on correctly. Um, but it's not passing any current. There's no current at all going through this leg. It's all going through the, uh, through the NPN.